So let's create an Extreme Cloud IQ account. To create an account or log in into existing one, go to ExtremeCloudIQ.com. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see the Register button. So click on that. And it takes you to this page over here. Now, all that is required of you to do here is to put down some of your details, the most important one being your email address. And this needs to be a valid email address because it's going to be used for your administrative account and for you to be able to log in into Extreme Cloud IQ. The second thing is you're being asked to select a country and we'll select United Kingdom in here. But what this does is it determines which RDC, which data center this Extreme Cloud IQ inst instance is going to be created in and where your data is going to live. So by selecting United Kingdom, we're creating an instance in the Irish data center because that is the closest point of presence to where we are. Accept the terms of service and click on register. You will receive an email message with a URL to set up your Extreme Cloud IQ. And all that does is you'll be able to set up your password. Uh, so your password to be able to log in to Extreme Cloud IQ. And then you go back to the original login slash registration page and you go to ExtremeCloudIQ.com and you log in with your credentials. When you log in, you will see uh, two different things. One is on the right hand side, you'll see manage other deployments option. And what that does is if your account has been added to other Extreme Cloud IQ instances of other customers, uh, for example, you'll be able to select them over here and log into those instances. And this would be for a management as a service or a wireless as a service scenario. Uh, where maybe you act as an MSP or you work in a support organization where you need to be able to have access to other customer instances. And the role in the, the roles in that instances that you have might be different. In some of those instances, you maybe only have monitor access. In others, you may have full privileges to operate the network. Um, and it really depends on the role-based access control settings that your account has been given. And uh, you obtain access to these other accounts by having other administrators uh, assigning them to you, to that email address that you use to register your own. But uh, you own this specific account. So the one that we created, this is the one you own. You're the administrator of that account. But that account can be added as a login user to other Extreme Cloud IoT accounts. And it creates opportunities for uh, managed service providers to be able to manage from a single pane of glass other uh, customer deployments as well. So right now we're only worried about this left hand side of the GUI uh, and we want to create our own network. We want to manage a new network. So let's go in there and let's do manage my network. So when you log in for the first time, the instance is going to be pretty much empty. There's no devices in here. There's no, there's no clients. There's no data. There's no history. Um, and what we'll do before we connect any clients and access points, we will set up our account with some of the basics that you should probably always do. So if you go under ML Insights, you'll see that you get a message that says you have zero locations. Click here to create one. One of the things to note about locations is the location hierarchy is very important because a lot of things within Extreme Cloud IQ depend on you having locations set up. And location basically means your campuses, your buildings, your floors, and that will allow you later to monitor where your client devices are, monitor statistics for each of the locations, and last but not least, you'll be able to create assignment rules and powerful configurations, configuration rules that will depend on where either the client is connecting or where the device is, is placed or where a switch is, is placed or where an access point is placed. And depending on the location, you might be assigning different parts of the configuration to that device. So uh, locations are a very powerful tool and will create location hierarchy right now. You can either import, so if you're migrating for, from another instance, you can import that hierarchy from there, but we'll just start with a new, a brand new instance. Um, 
a new deployment. We're not importing anything, so let's create a new one. We'll call the organization training. We will provide a street address, which is going to be the courtyard 16 in Farnham. And for our country, we decided that we're going to select United Kingdom. Now, one thing about the country, you see that the country has a country code on the right hand side. This is going to be the default country code that will be pushed down to devices connecting to this instance and it will determine the regulatory domain for your wireless setting and that determines which channel uh, which channels are available and also what's the maximum power output of those devices so the country code in here is very important so let's select united kingdom and click get started okay so what this did it created on the right hand side uh, you see the global map, so it already pinpointed us to the address that we've specified. But on the le left hand side, it already created some of the hierarchy. So we have a campus location, we have a building, and we have a floor. And in here, you can actually add more locations, you can add more campuses, you can add more buildings to the campus, and then more importantly, you can add floors to the building. So let's select our floor. And let's upload the floor plan. So the floor without a floor plan doesn't really tell us much. And we'll just choose one from the library. So if we had a floor plan which we obtained uh, for our deployment, we would be able to upload the image here. But we'll just choose one that's already existing in the system. So I'll select this one. And then we'll be asked to size it. Uh, sizing the floor plan is very important because one of the things this will do is when you place access points and when you see wireless clients connecting to those access points, um, you will be seeing the Wi-Fi coverage and you'll be also able to see projected coverage and projected heat maps. If your sizing is wrong, well then the RF, al the algorithm that projects the RF coverage obviously will be wrong because um, there's a difference if you're planning for a 20 times 20 meter size floor or 200 times 200 size floor. So let's select a floor size. You can select this tool in here that says size manually and you get these two crosshairs. And you can drag them to determine a length of a wall. So we'll select this outer wall in here. It's usually the best, a best practice to select the longest wall that you can find. We'll use meters and set this to 70 meters. Apply. Okay, and now the floor plan has been scaled correctly. So we go from 0 to 70 up here, from 0 to 60 down here. And what we can do now is we can leave it as is and start deploying. But what you sometimes do is um, you create a predictive, predictive Wi-Fi plan. And the reason you, you create a predictive plan is to determine what the projected coverage is going to be, what the projected capacity is going to be, and more importantly, how many access points you're going to need for this deployment. So let's assume this is a greenfield deployment. There's nothing in this building. There's no Wi-Fi. So let's go and draw a perimeter. Now what the perimeter determines is where do we want coverage? So a perimeter says, within this blue area that we're currently drawing, this is where we want Wi-Fi coverage, and outside of this area, we don't need coverage. And this gives, this is basically an input to the RF prediction algorithm, uh, and it tells it, so this is what we're interested in. We're not interested in coverage outside of the building. So you'll see once we do the auto setup, there's going to be no access points placed outside of this, of this area. Okay, now let's draw some walls. The image that you see on the screen uh, doesn't actually that doesn't tell anything to the algorithm itself or to the to the heat map prediction tool. This is just for you to be able to visualize um, how the environment looks like. But in terms of the RF environment, 
the system doesn't know anything about the walls, about any possible obstructions and so on. So what we'll do is, uh, up here you have the option of drawing a wall. So we'll draw a couple of dry walls. Just to tell the algorithm that these are actually obstructions, that this is, these are areas where the RF attenuation is going to happen, the Wi-Fi signal is going to be absorbed. And let's create some thick walls. So let's create a concrete wall over here. And another one down here. Now we're not going to go in too much detail in this lab, but one thing that I will say about creating a uh, predictive Wi-Fi plan is the more accurate information you put in, the more accurate information you get out. So the more accurate you are with your sizing, with your uh, walls, with materials, with drawing in where things are, the more accurately it's going to represent your actual environment. Uh, if you don't put anything in, the algorithm will assume this is an open space, regardless of what kind of an image you upload. So let's just do a couple more. Okay, and let's create a bigger obstruction over here. You see, you have different walls available in here, uh, and each wall has a different attenuation type, um, from a cubicle being 1 dB of attenuation all the way to an elevator shaft, which has a 30 dB of attenuation. So let's create another concrete wall in here, and then we're done. Let's plan some devices. Let's put some devices onto our setup. And these are going to be simulated devices. So what we're able to do is we're able to add simulated devices to the setup. And we will let the algorithm figure out how many devices we need and where they need to be planned. So let's select high-speed connectivity. And if you click here on more, you'll be able to determine which access point you want to use. So let's use AP... 305C. So let's use this access point. And let's plan for a minimum signal strength of negative 65. We're planning for 5 gigahertz primarily over here. Channel bandwidth of 20 megahertz. Output power of 15. And let's do auto place. So let's see what the algorithm comes up with. Okay, so this is the placement of our APs. And now I can go to heat map and see how the coverage looks like. So this is the, this is the projected coverage uh, for our deployment based on our input. Uh, so, and these are the, uh, what the algorithm thinks the best locations for mounting those access points. And in here, you will have the option of doing some other things. For example, looking at the, um, what the SNR is gonna be, and you can then tweak the noise floor from negative 85 to negative 90, or if it's worse, like negative 80, you'll see that you only have the expected noise floor in um, just a couple of areas in the, in the setup. Uh, and we said that we would expect it not a signal-to-noise ratio of at least 25, that's what we said in the lecture. And normally a noise floor in an in a office space is going to be negative 85 or negative 90, depending on where you are. So negative 85 would be in a very busy area. Negative 90 is in a less busy area. So let's do negative 90. So this is going to be your deployment. Uh, one thing to say about predictive serving and predictive planning is this doesn't replace an on-site site survey. So when you're doing a greenfield deployment, you still want to confirm this by doing an actual site survey on site but it does give you a quick tool to assess how Wi-Fi is going to 
uh, perform, how Wi-Fi is going to look like. And the reason you need to do an on-site on site survey is because things may not be the same as on the plan. You still need to assess what kind of materials the walls are, the walls are built from. And um, you need to confirm that the environment actually looks like um, the floor plan and the, the RF environment actually looks like what we're assuming over here. So we're assuming a certain noise floor. We're assuming negative 90 um, dBm noise floor, which may not be true. Um, and we are assuming that the walls are where the image claims they are. Okay, so once you do this, you are ready to start onboarding some of your devices. And just to summarize, the most important thing that we did here was uh, we set up our account and we created the location hierarchy. And it is a best practice to create the location hierarchy for every campus, every building, and every floor uh, that you have, and then place devices on those floors because that will then fuel the uh, machine learning engine uh, in Extreme Cloud IQ. It will uh, give you richer data sets in terms of monitoring and insights, um, and also it will allow you to do management by location. You'll be able to apply configuration depending on where those, devi where those devices are, whether it's in, in, in different floors, different buildings, different campuses, or different countries and continents around the globe.